All right, Brent at Bam Bam Holsters, and I get requests for thumb brakes. This video will wind up being posted as an explanation of such. Um, this is my standard thumb brake that I built. I just finished this holster. A customer will come pick it up tomorrow, and I thought I would show you uh, what it is that I put into a thumb brake. Um, there's no end of ways that do that they can be done. This is what I do unless otherwise told. Get a shot of the hardware in there. Metal stiffener on the back. Has a protective cap so that metal, no metal comes in contact with the gun. It should be hard, hard to snap when you first start. Because um, you don't want them to get loose on you. Uh, but the thumb brakes, I usually add like, usually I think it's $15 I add to do a thumb brake. Uh, I can't quite remember. I guess I should have known that. Um, but the concept behind a thumb brake is a secondary retention device. The gun's not going to go anywhere, right? But I build a first retention into all of them. That gun is not going nowhere. That's the way a form-fitted holster is made. Most people, I think I have one, most people are more used to the $10, $20 holsters you buy at Walmart, not necessarily knocking them, uh, but they'll be made out of uh, vinyl usually, and they'll be made for any size gun this size. This one is made only for an M&P uh, frame, holster, uh, gun. And um, when they put, when they get to the, make them, make one for one, that's what I do. When they make one to cover 20, uh, it's not gonna fit in there, plus it's the wrong material for that kind of a fit. But that's why most of them have a thumb brake. Uh, with this kind of holster, you don't need it. It can be loosened up per the instructions I send with the holster. If I'm told ahead of time, I can loosen it up some I prefer not too much, otherwise you might as well not have a form-fitted holster. Um, but for the most part, can do whatever you want. That's the thumb brake. And they're usually $10 to $15, kind of depends on the application. 